Jim Cook. I'm glad to see so many of you here in the audience today. Also, I'd love to see you today at home. Today, we're going to share with you a unique dining experience, a formal Chinese banquet. A Chinese banquet is a very special event in China. The actual and the most ultimate banquet is the Han Manchurian Feast. It lasts for three whole days. And each day, there are two meals. And each meal has approximately 36 courses. And you eat and you eat for about three to four hours each meal. And in between, they bus you to remote area. Then you have to jog back to the restaurant and you eat again. And this kind of banquet is very famous. It's called Moon Horn Yun Jik. And this normally costs about $250,000 Hong Kong for a party of 10. You know what they serve? With dessert and acid. And not only that, not only that, after three days, you probably don't want to see. You probably won't be hungry in about three months. You probably don't want to see any food in three years. This is the ultimate banquet experience. I attend one of those. Recently, I sit there and I got so confused. I don't know what to eat. I don't know what to choose. I end up having cheeseburger. <laughs> the first thing I want to show you is one of the most popular, most classical Chinese dish is nesting scallop. First of all, to save time, I want to do the scallop with the nest. I want to do the nest first, the potato basket. If you can use potato or you can use taro, traditionally in China, Potatoes, very rare. Here in North America, potatoes, no big deal. We have potato. When I was growing up in China, when I was growing up in China, potato excites me. This <laughs> is the one that I got. This is my pet potato. This is one I get on my fifth birthday, and I still have it. I even have my pet peas. But anyway, all you are doing is you julian all of these potato, julian them, and you Always remember to soak them in a tiny bit of salt water because it would delay the browning reaction, okay? It keeps it white, so make sure you sprinkle salt when you soak this. And then we'll put a tiny, tiny bit, dip this in, oil a little bit. This is two basket here. I dip one in and I put the potato here. This is julienne potato. Put enough so you can move them around like this, okay? You have to have enough, OK? You should cut it long enough, and you are able to push this aside, like this. And then you put another one right on top, like this. Can you see that? Now, the next step is you hold on to this, and you put in this hot oil. Look at this. Very slowly, very slowly. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? Now, let us sit there for a little while. Now, of course, of course, you cannot buy basket like this. You buy a basket straight, and then you bend the darn thing. It looks like this, OK? We're going to let it sit here for a little while. In the meantime, I'm going to remove these because I won't be using this right away. If you have leftover of julienne potato, you should, once again, sprinkle some salt fill with water to keep it white. In the meantime, I want to show you, we're going to stir fry. I'm going to turn this heat on. Please turn on. I'm going to turn this on. OK. We're going to stir fry some scallop. OK. Here, I have approximately one pound of scallop, party of four. See, everybody have four ounces. You can actually serve up to six people. You marinate it with approximately one table one tablespoon of dry sherry, about a quarter of a teaspoon to half a teaspoon of salt, and also a tiny bit of cornstarch, about one to two teaspoons of cornstarch. Let it sit there for about half an hour or so. Set aside. Move it a little bit like this. OK. Set it aside. In the meantime, I also get about a tiny bit of snow pea. Cut it up, because this is too big. So what I do is I cut it in half like this. Look at this. Cut it in half like this. Cut in half, cut in half, and all you need is about maybe 10 or 12 of these. Cut in half. If you want to make it fancy, you cut a little thing like this. 
If you want to make it even fancier, you can do more. But I never have the patience. You see this? I make it more ridiculous. It looks more ridiculous. <laughs> and you put it over here. You set it aside. Put it over here. Set it aside. And also I have some red onion. Some bamboo shoot. Okay? All of these ingredients. We're going to put them all together because I want to show you. All I have is about half an onion. Red onion. And also about six or seven of these black mushrooms and some water chestnut. Because water chestnut looks like scallop. So we're going to stir fry this. Now, this is hot enough. So we're going to stir fry this. All I have to do is get the oil from here. Look at this. Put it over here. About two teaspoons. Hot. And then, first, you stir fry your scallop. Let me get all this ready here. Scallop is hot. You stir fry them. You can even do blanching. Wow, hot. Can you see that? Nice and hot. Make sure you stir fry them properly. Make sure you catch it. Do not cook too long. You should never cook too long because when you cook too long, it's no good. You see this? Now, a lot of people don't know why shellfish normally taste sweeter than fish. The reason is because in shellfish, particularly like lobster, prawn, and crab, the reason why they are sweeter is because they are higher in collagen, you know, glycogen, the protein. So when it's cooked, they turn to sugar. Because that's why it tastes sweeter. The sweetest thing is lobster, and then crab, and then shrimp. When this is done, you remove these. Remove this and put it over here. And then you stir fry the rest. Now, you can use your spatula to scrape this because this is burnt a little bit. And then you add a tiny bit more oil. And then we stir fry the rest of the ingredient. Water chestnut, about 10 to 12 snow pea, half an onion, and some mushroom. And also about a small can of bamboo shoot. Stir fry. Stir fry this. Look at this. Stir fry. And then you put the scallop back. Okay, this way you do not overcook your scallop. Put it back over here. And then you season with a tiny bit of salt and pepper. Tiny bit of broth to make a sauce. Okay? Tiny bit of white pepper. You don't want to add soy sauce in this particular dish because you don't want to color this up. And then you thicken this up with cornstarch solution right in the middle where the boiling liquid is. And then, in the meantime, let me show you. Let's remove these so we'll get it out of the way. The whole thing is ready. Look at how beautiful. And then, we set it aside. We'll check on this. Now, normally, this would take, look at this. Look at the basket. You see that? Now, normally, it would take about five to six minutes to do this. And you use a ladle to go like this. One, two, three, to make sure this is nice and done. And then when it's done, all you have to do is you shake it like this. Let me show you. You go like this. The whole thing comes out. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> now, here, I want to show you how to garnish this dish, okay? Because this is very easy to do. Here, I have one of these already done. And all you have to do is garnish it a little bit. Look at how beautiful. You need some beautiful garnish. And then when it's done, you get all these. Look at beautiful, huh? 
This is what you call nesting scallop. It is so easy. Now, the best way to understand a Chinese banquet is actually to go to one. Recently, I invite some of my good friends from the San Francisco Chinese Cooking Teachers Association to celebrate my 99th birthday. <laughs> and this is what our banquet looked like. In China, we love a good party. And a good party means a lot of food. And a lot of food means a banquet. Look at all these food we have here. A banquet is no ordinary meal. Normally, each course is served separately, but we laid it all out for you to see. Isn't it beautiful? This is our appetizer. Look at this. It is frying out of the plate. It is too pretty to eat. And of course, the imperial picking duck. And you remember the nesting scallops, pineapple fried rice, and no banquet is complete without shark's fin soup. Actually, the best part of a banquet is when you let your teeth do the talking. So let us all dig in and hey fi What a scrumptious Chinese banquet. I want to thank all my good friends from the San Francisco Chinese Cooking Teachers Association. Besides, a lot of them are actually here. Thank you and welcome. The next one I want to show you is another exciting, very simple, yet very, very classy Chinese banquet dish, double prawn. Normally, one prawn. You just stir fry prawn by itself is for ordinary, everyday meal. This is for special occasion. Here, you start with 10 jumbo prawn like this. Jumbo prawn like this. See how big? It's so jumbo, like a jumbo jet. <laughs> and then, all you have to do is sprinkle a tiny bit of salt and pepper, which I already have done earlier. Just let it sit for about 15 minutes to half an hour. And then, you use a little knife, dinner knife, get ready, and then you dip this in, this is cornstarch or flour, okay? Set it aside because otherwise the stuffing would not stay. Now, the idea of doing this is you cut this open from where the wing part is, but don't cut through the whole thing. So basically, you're basically butterfied it and flatten it up a little bit. If you want, you can also do it like, like this. So this way, it will be easier, flatter, okay? And then I coat it with starch or flour, otherwise, it won't stay. The idea of doing that is to absorb all this. In the meantime, I'm heat up some hot oil. And then you use this to make a little shrimp paste. This is the filling, okay? You use approximately two dry mushroom, black mushroom, chop it up, and use about six ounces of fresh frozen shrimp. And also use a tiny bit of cornstarch, about one, two, one teaspoon to two teaspoons is fine. And also use about an egg white, okay? Aside from egg white, you also use a tiny bit of salt, use a tiny bit of minced ginger and garlic, and then you will do this. In the meantime, you see how you do it? Very easy to do. You fill this in very, very carefully. Nice hum like this. It depends on how hungry your guest is. You can put anywhere from one tablespoon to about one and a half tablespoon, nice and smooth like this. You see how I do it? One, two, three, okay? Now, after that, you're gonna have to deep fry it, okay? Now take it over here, take it over here, and put this side down like this. One, deep fry this, deep fry this. Use about 350 to 360 degree. And then, let me do another one, just in case some of us get hungry. Besides, I know everybody in the studio are looking at what I'm doing eagerly. <laughs> and I'm quite sure you watch it at home also. You look hungry. Are you hungry? Yes. Every, everybody is hungry. See? 
the amazing thing about the new technologies, actually, I can talk to you at home. How are you doing today? <laughs> now, all you have to do is, you can actually do this ahead of time. In the meantime, let's get rid of these. In the meantime, we're going to make the sauce. This spicy tomato sauce here, I have two-thirds of a cup of broth and about half a cup of tomato ketchup and also about one to two tablespoons of lemon juice and also I have a tiny bit of sugar, about one to two tablespoons of sugar. Mix this up. So this way, you're actually doing two things at the same time. One, you are doing your prawn. You see this? Now how can you tell whether the prawn is done? When the prawn is done, they turn pink. And the tail also turn pink. We call it the tail tail sign. <laughs> OK. Now I'm quite sure some of you probably know what I was doing. So you deep fry this, you deep fry this, and make sure you do it properly. Nice. And then the sauce is ready. When the sauce is ready, all you have to do is thicken this up a little bit. And I want to do it more a modern style. I put the sauce on the bottom. Can you see how wonderful the sauce is? It's nice and sweet and sour. Also have a tiny bit, two teaspoon of Chinese mustard. The hot mustard is a must in this particular case. It's nice, and we set it aside. Get the prawn out. Look at this beautiful prawn. Wow. <laughs> set it aside. Put it over here. You see that? And then, when it's ready, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the prawn like this. How beautiful. Look at one, two, three. And then put it right here. Look at this. Put it right in the middle. Oh. Isn't that beautiful? See that? Now, aside from this, you can also serve your banquet with this gorgeous looking barbecue duck salad. All you have to do is some lettuce, about half of duck, barbecue duck, slice it up, use a chicken and chop it up, and use a plum sauce dressing, which include a plum sauce, Chinese hot mustard, soy sauce, sesame seed, and chili oil. Got a nice sweet aftertaste. Of course, since this is a banquet dish, I garnish it with this gorgeous looking garnish. If you think that is something, I'm now going to show you something even more spectacular. Garnishing can be a very important part of a dish. In fact, in some cases, it can be a dish by itself. Just look at this beautiful pair of cup made from cucumbers and carrots. Isn't it gorgeous? This rose was once a turnip, and this is lotus flower. It looks like someone just brought it back from a lotus pond. Look at this masterpiece, a peacock. This can take up to several hours to create. You need the eye of an artist. Now, let us meet the artist who has created them from Beijing, China. Will you all please welcome Miss Lily Li Jing Wang. <laughs> welcome to Yen Kung Fu Show. Hi. Uh, uh, Wang, you, you die, you, uh, where do you work uh, before? A Great War Hotel in China. Sure. She is from Great Wall Hotel in China, specifically come over here to do this for you. Are you feel privileged? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. She is the principal garnishing artist in Great Wall Hotel. If anybody visited China, that's one of the best hotel in China today. Now, first of all, why don't you show us this is look at all these garnish. Let's take a look at all this. This is the peacock. Look at how beautiful. This is peacock. This is already finally done. This is half done. And this is the one that I already have shown you. See, all of these garnishing. Now, I'm going to ask her to do us a favor, to show us how from a piece like this, daikon, and will come out to be so beautiful. Look at this. See that? Can you show us how to do this? Do one more pedal. Ni zhuo yi kuai. Zhuo, sen zhuo yi kuai. Very carefully. Very carefully. So this way, everybody, are you looking or what? <laughs> you see that? Everybody see? This is one extra pedal. Can you see that? All you have to do is 
use your knife to go like this, and then you have one extra petal. And after that, how can you come from this color to this color? You're dyeing it. Okay, let's show them how to dye this over here. Sure. This one is food color. USDA. Okay. Wow, look at how beautiful. <laughs> look at that. Let me show you. Look at how beautiful. See this? And then we'll set this aside. Now, of course, if you want to have yellow, you use yellow. I've never seen a dark rose before, so don't put in ink. Now, the next one to show us is how easy it is to shape this feather for the peacock. And this is one. You can eat Sure. Start with this. Look at this. This is the daikon, the Chinese white radish. Look at this. She has been doing this for 64 years. <laughs> she is only 21 years old. Look at how, look at her skill. This is a basically wonderful garnish. The thing is, how she used her little knife, and this is all basically sure, all she dao needs. Daozi, daozi. Yeah. Daozi means big knife in Chinese. Wow, she tried, look at this. <laughs> Look at how easy. Yes, sure. Look at this. You see this? Yes. <laughs> I want to show you one more time. Don't, don't, don't move. You see this? You see this? And then <laughs> you put a little red, uh, red, um, either bell pepper or carrot. Put it right on there, and you stick it over here. Then you have beautiful things look like this. Look, look at this. You see this? Can you see this? Now, the next thing I'm going to ask her to do is show something very, very wonderful. I'm going to ask her to show you quickly. Ask her to show you how quickly she make this little bird for this peacock. You see this? Very carefully, very, very slowly. While she's doing that, I'm going to quickly show you how to do something very easy. I call it J chicken, okay? Here, I have marinate a whole chicken fryer for about two to three hours, and sure. I steam them, okay? Then I steam them, and I, before I steam them, I marinate them. I marinate them for about two to three hours in about one tablespoon to two tablespoon of dry sherry, and a tiny bit of salt, and also some ginger. And then I steam them, and I cut it up like this. This is the chicken breast. I set it aside. I put it right here, OK? Look at this. I just put it right over here. And then I cut in another one. How are you doing, Lin Jing? Sure. Oh, let me show you. You see this? Now, if you cannot see, you, when you dye it, you will be able to see. See this? The color contrast. You see that? No. Yes. Ah. Okay, she is going to show us how to make something like this. Look at how gorgeous. This is a rose. And she, can, she only takes about one and a half minutes to do. Okay, do this. While she's doing that, I'm going to cut up more chicken. In the meantime, I can also do. Look at this. We put them all together like this. Look at this. And then put the ham in between. This looks like a domino. This is what I call landscape work in a dish. You use about four to six ounces, up to eight ounces of this Smithfield ham, or you can use any good quality smoked ham. And you put it over there, and you line them all up, and you'll see how beautiful it looks. And in the meantime, I also would make a little sauce with Broth, about a quarter of a cup to half a cup of broth. And then also half a teaspoon of sesame seed oil and a dash of white pepper and also some salt. When it's done, I pull that over here. And then look at how beautiful this is J chicken. You see that? J chicken. Look at beautiful. Now, oh! of these are wonderful garnishing everybody can do. I want to thank my guest, Li Jinghuang, 
for showing us all this beautiful garnish. By the way, yeah. she is now a garnisher in resident at the Royal Palace Restaurant in the San Francisco Bay Area. Please join us next time. If Yen can cook it, so can you. Judge Yen.